Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. This is part 32 of the Chrome CI playlist. In this video, we will work on the orders screen, which is the screen that shows all the orders that the user has ordered. We will show them in a simple text, so we won't show any images. And now let's get started. Uh, first of all, we wanna add some more things to our order data class. So let's go to the data package and uh, the order package. In here, we wanna add more things. We also need the date and we also need an order ID. So let's create these attributes and we can just assign default values for that. Let's say date, which is a string. And now to get a date in a format of a string, we can use simple date format. And in here we specify the format. So we wanna get the year first, then the month, after that the day. And now you specify the language or the area, so just English. After that, we type format and we pass that object. Okay, now we also want an order ID. So you can say order ID and we can make this long. Now we can use next long, the function that comes from Kotlin math, I think. Uh, from random, okay, Kotlin random. And here we need to specify the range, so from zero until, and here you need to add a really big number, so you make sure that users don't have, or the orders don't have the same ID. So in my case, I'll add 100 billion. And I also gonna add the total price to that, just to make sure that no orders will have the same ID. And we can say too long. That's it for the order class. Now inside the order status, we also want to add one more function in here. And I'm just going to copy and paste that one. Uh, I'm going to copy it now. And I'm going to paste it. So let me go through this. In this function, which is called get order status, we pass the status as a string and we return it as order status. So we check when the order status is ordered, we return this object. When it's cancelled, we return this object. When it's confirmed, we return this object, shipped this one, delivered this one, and other than that, we return this one because it's the only one that was left. And I don't want to type that because it's just very normal function. Now let's create the view model for that screen and let's call this orders view model. Let's set up that view model and we add the dependencies as always. So in this one, we need Firestore and Firebase Authentication. We can import inject. Then we need to annotate this with help view model. Now let's create a state and name this all orders mutable state flow. We're gonna have resource list of orders. Then we pass resource uh, resource dot and specified initially, and we want to expose this state or UI. We can say as state flow. Okay, now let's create a function to get all orders, and we want to first emit loading in our uh, in our state. So all orders dot emit resource loading, and now we can actually retrieve the orders for that specific user. So you can say firestore.collection, access the user collection, and we wanna get the user document. For that, we need the UID of that user. Then we wanna access the orders collection for that user. After that, we get all of that. Then we have on success listener and on failure listener. Inside here, we need to get the orders. So we can do that to objects and we can say order. Then we emit success in our state. We pass the orders. Now in here, we're gonna just emit error. So let's do that. And we pass the exception or the message of that exception. Now we only need to call this inside the init block. So let's do that get all orders okay that's it for the view model now let's move for the ui stuff 
And as always, I have left you a file in the description where you can find the layouts and the drawables. We also need to add some styles and colors in this video. So let's do that. Let's go to rest. Let's start with the colors. And um, I want to add a green color. So let's name this green and just select the green from here. Then we want to add a style in here. And you also can find that style in the description in the file. So I'm going to just paste in here. I'm going to remove this. And now we also want to add the layout. So I'll just copy them and paste them in here. Click on OK. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, I think we need to add an icon. Let me just see. Here. Okay. We need an icon for this one. So let's actually add that icon first. You will also find this icon in the file. So let's paste that. And now we can actually preview. As you can see, this is the order item. We're going to show the ID of the order in here and the date of that order in here. And this circle will just tell us the status of the order. We will change the color of this one. Now in this fragment, as you could see, we have just a circle of view and a toolbar. So now let's close this and let's create the adapter. Let's go to the adapter package. And let's create an adapter for the orders and call this orders adapter. And I'm just gonna set up the adapter, cut the video and get back to you because we've been doing that in almost each video. Okay, so nothing special. We've created the adapter and we created the view holder here. We need binding from order item binding. Then we have this bind function which receives an order. Here we have the diff URL. In here we compare the products list and in this function, we compare the entire object. Now in this differ, you know what is that. In this view holder, you just need to pass the parent and false here. Then on bind view holder, we get the order and we call bind on that order. And one more thing we could do is to have a click on the order item. So let's have a lambda expression for that. You can say var on click. We can send the order and we return unit. We make this nullable and give it null value. But make sure to wrap everything between brackets like this. Now inside the bind function, we just wanna we just wanna bind the order detail into our views. So let's say binding. Okay, let's make this a private value first. Let's say binding dot apply. We need to change the order ID and we make this order dot order ID. We convert that to string. Then we also need to change the order date. And now we want to get the resources because we want to change the color of that circle, which will tell the user the status of that order. So let's get the resources. Now we want to change the color of that circle according to the status of that order. For that, I just want to copy and paste the function, uh, just a simple function. So which is going to determine the color of that circle. And as you can see, here's a function. Let's actually import this one, the function that we created here, as you can see. And now we just import this and we are good to go. Then we also need to import the R here and import this one. And that's it. And this function, as I said, will help us to determine the color of the status we have. So as you can see, if the order status is ordered, we return color drawable with uh, with color of orange and yellow. If it's confirmed, we return a green. Same thing if it's delivered and if it's shipped. And if it's canceled or returned, we return uh, red. In here, we can say image order state or status. We can name that anything. It doesn't matter. We can say state image drawable and we can pass the color drawable. Okay, that's it for the adapter. Now we can finally create the fragment and set up this adapter inside there. So let's go inside settings, create that fragment and name this orders fragment. Extend from fragment. We need binding for this one. What is fragment orders binding? And we need the view model. And we need to get the order view model. 
then we also need the adapter so orders adapter by lazy orders adapter now inside on create a view you can initialize binding and we can return the view of that now on view created we can set up the recycler view so let's do that create this function we can use binding dot rv all orders dot apply we need to set the adapter which is orders adapter and the layout manager just a linear layout manager we pass the required context here then the orientation vertical in our case we pass false for the last attribute and then we can simply collect the state so we can say life cycle scope dot launch when started here we collect the state using the view model collect latest and here i'm gonna go to the card fragment or any fragment we have and we can just copy everything in here in this collect because i don't want to keep writing that we can paste let's delete this stuff and in loading we're just going to show the progress bar in here we can hide it and we also can show the products in the adapter so we can say orders adapter dot differ dot submit we get the list from it to data okay so one mistake um here the order view model seems like we have two view models almost the same name so we have the order view model and we have the orders view model that one we need in this fragment so let's actually try to change the name of this one so uh, let's actually get into that and let's refactor the name and let's just name this all orders view model and now we just get that in here and uh, here we just need to collect all orders okay we're good to go uh, here we also want to check if it do data is empty or null is null or empty in this case we just want to show we want to show this text view and inside error we can just hide the progress bar and i believe that this is everything now one thing is missed is the android interpoint annotation and let's go to the navigraph and add this fragment and let's make this the home fragment we could also change the name of this fragment to all orders fragment the adapter as well so let's do that oops not here let's go refactor let's make this all orders fragment same thing for the adapter so refactor rename all orders adapter click on ok and now let's launch the app to preview everything okay now we got an error and that error from the order uh, data class the reason is because we have not added the empty constructor so you can add actually you can do it like this as we were doing it so you can add constructor and you just create a new constructor and new empty one or you can just do it in here you can actually say equals and you can just add uh, initial values for this so let's do that i'm gonna add initial values in here and the address address which is already have its own empty constructor now for these values they have their initial values now let's launch the app and as you can see we have not got any crash and here are the orders now uh, for me i actually changed the status of the order from my firebase console just to just to um did debug this recycle view let's actually try to add a new list or new order sorry Let's try to make a new order here so i'm gonna add just any products this and let's add this chair and let's go and order that let's select this address and place this order click on yes okay we place the order now let's actually check firebase console okay here's the order and let's actually change the status here to cancelled so we can see the red circle cancelled is that how we type this no okay okay let's click on update and let's run the app and as you can see we get a red circle here because the status of that order is cancelled 
Okay guys, so that was all for this video. Um, I think we will be finishing this project in like three or more four videos. So it's too close guys. And thank you so much for following up with this playlist. Hope you have a great day. Catch you in the next video.